Catholic school. As vicious as Roman rule, I got my knuckles bruised by a lady in black. Now that's not true because I did go to Catholic school, but it was the lay teachers that were really evil, not the nuns. Good morning. Um, I have some jewelry work to do today. Um, but before I get into that, I thought we could talk about what happened this weekend. And I have other things to do, so sit tight. We'll get to the jewelry in a minute. Um, the cool thing about jewelry is don't stop watching this video because it's about jewelry. And that's because jewelry is essentially metal work and metal work has a lot of useful applications. Um, you can learn how to properly saw, how to weld, although it's on a smaller scale than your typical large welding, but I mean, it's a good, it's a good base. How to fuse two objects together cold, such as uh, making a rivet. Not doing rivets today, um, but I'm doing a pendant for someone who I knew a long time ago on Twitter. The reason I'm, I'm putting the clay in the bag is because it's exactly at the perfect place to store it, or almost, it's a little too sticky, but um, I need to put it away. I'm, I've been trying to refine as much clay as possible before winter comes because I know I'm not going to want to be tracing down to the creek bed when it's cold out to get clay. And uh, sometimes it's too wet and, you know, so when the conditions are right, I, I, do the, I gather the materials I will need later on. But anyway, so about my pants. If you see this red line, this is exactly how much weight I've gained since, I, since when I used to be in great shape. <laughs> I can measure it based on the size of my stripe. Um, I didn't want to throw these really cute jeans away, so I cut, uh, ripped open the seams and put a stripe. Anyway, that's where I get my silly clown pants that I'm wearing today. But I like them. Anyway. This weekend, my son was playing outside with his friends and he got bit by, uh, I think he basically laid down on a red ant pile and he got bites on both of his legs and on his arm and he's in a lot of pain. And so if I look super tired, it's because Saturday night I slept on the couch next to him or we have, a, we have an L-shaped couch. So I slept on one side and he slept on the other because I wanted to make sure he was breathing okay. I'm, he's uh, severely allergic to the red ants, and when they bite me, almost nothing happens. I get a little, I feel a little sting, I sweep the ant off, five minutes later, there's no bump, there's no mark, nothing. He swells up, his muscle swells up. Um, luckily this time, the ants were not near a joint or on his foot, which is especially bad. Uh, you end up carrying him around a little bit. He's getting big, and so it's getting harder to deal with. Um, I do have an EpiPen. You know the whole, I don't know if uh, it made world news, but the EpiPen news is that an EpiPen, which is, uh, if, if, you're, if you're going into anaphylactic shock, such as people who have peanut butter allergies and things like that, um, you should carry this pen. And I think it's, um, epinephrine or, or, or one of those it'll if your if your heart stops it, it will jump your heart back into starting again or, or open up your airways really quickly and you get the kid to the hospital and get me medical assistance immediately um, the the EpiPen providers uh, the EpiPen in America costs about six hundred dollars in Europe where they have completely socialized medicine I believe uh, the cost is about $150 which means that the Americans are subsidizing the Europeans and they're 
their costs of the EpiPen. Anyway, it's been a huge to-do in the media, and um, people are very upset about the cost of these things, and I'm, I'm glad that I'm fortunate enough to carry one with me just in case with his severe allergy to ants. I mean, it's just in, it's just in case. He has never needed to use one, but I can't imagine the people who can't afford to get a hold of this device. Uh, it should be everywhere, you would think, a life-saving device like this. Just like defibrillators are all over the place. In every gym, there's defibrillators mounted into the walls. Um, but anyway, uh, that's been the big to-do in the media lately about the EpiPen. And um, he's doing okay. He went to school today. He's limping. Uh, he's been a champ about the whole thing. Didn't even cry. But, you know, it hurts really bad. And I feel for him. And so anyway, I stayed up. I look like crap. That's my excuse today. Because I stayed up with him Saturday night. Uh, or I stayed, woke up several times tossing and turning on the couch and, you know, just seeing if he was okay. And um, that's what you do when you're a mom. Being a mom is uh, there. Okay, I'm looking at the camera. I'm trying. I just, it's really difficult to look at the camera when there's a screen with moving pictures on it in the background. I'm not trying to be a, a creepy person and stare at the camera. It's just, um, it's, a, it's like look at the black dot, not at the moving thing. Very, very difficult. So, anyway. Um, if I'm cranky, that could be why I'm really tired and I'm old now. <laughs> uh, well, I'm about done here, so I am going to wash my hands and get down to the jewelry business. Business. I am sawing out um, the letters and for two necklaces. Obviously, this, he, my customer has drawn this design. Um, it's the, I think, the first letter of his name and the first letter of her name. And I looked at it and I thought, well, I'll saw, saw it out in one piece. And then as I'm thinking about what the necklace is going to look like, it'll look way more interesting if each letter is sawed out individually and then soldered together. So... I've already glued these down. I took a glue stick and I glued this paper that I um, I printed out his picture and then I sized it up to a, a little over an inch. And I've decided I'm going to cut the D out first and then cut the T out because if I cut the T out first, then I have destroyed all this space here. And I need to waste as little silver as possible because, you know, silver, it's precious metal or, hmm. Semi-precious? Well, it's precious then. It's precious to me. So, uh, the D, if I cut out the D first, then I still have all this room here to do the T from. And I can use the same piece of silver instead of grabbing another piece of silver. I, I do keep all my scraps to melt down and, and make into other things. But So, um, so I'm drawing across the, the D, so I know, hey, cut on the D. After I blew up the letters larger, I noticed they were very skinny, and that w with 20 gauge sterling silver, which is pretty stiff, but still you don't want the you don't want these letters to be flimsy. So I uh, I made the letters a little fatter. I I drew around them a little bit, and I'll saw. You can't put the silver back on as easily as you can take it off. So I'm gonna cut it out fatter, and if I need to take off a spot, I can take off a spot. So the first step to sawing out a letter is making a pilot a pilot hole. Is that it? <laughs> um, well, I've got a round ball burr, and I'm just going to drill a hole or drill a, a divot into my D's. So that when I put my drill bit, it's like a 
corkscrew. The corkscrew test. Ah! Dang it! Now when I use my regular drill bit, it won't skate around on the surface. Ah! Everything's falling. And it's very important to put on your most attractive safety glasses. These are magnifying glasses, but they also will protect me if any of these slivers of metal come flying off towards my eyes. Very important. I've only got two eyes, so I was planning on keeping them. There we go. Is this not the cutest little vice you ever saw? I had to choose a proper saw blade. You probably can't see this one's. This one is a lot thicker, and when when you hold the saw blade up to the side of the metal, you you can count how many teeth are actually touching the metal at any time. And this one is barely two, and this one. Oh, <laughs> I put the blade in backwards. Pause. Another important lesson to learn about sawing is to keep the blade perpendicular to the work. And as you're turning, that you keep that blade moving the whole time you're turning. You can't stop and turn your work and then start sawing again. You have to saw and turn at the same time in, so that you don't get that blade stuck. It keeps it, if you turn and while you're, while you're sawing, it keeps that, keeps that blade moving. And then it doesn't snap your blade also. And these blades are super flimsy. I come from the land down under. We now have two <laughs> very rough looking letter D's. And take the paper back off that one. And then that one just fell on the floor. So I'm going to cut the T's out of the leftover space. Heaven and earth decide that they both are satisfied. Illuminate the nose on their vacancy signs. If there's no one beside you when your soul embarks, I'll follow you into the dark. I'll follow you into the this dark. This one isn't finished being sought out, so I'm going to clip them together and use the properly sawed tee as a guide for sawing out the other tee. It came loose from the rest of the silver in the back, so, and it's a piece of paper, so I need something to show me where to saw. So I'm going to clamp them together. Maybe. If you don't have all the fancy tools, you can still do metal work. Uh, Harbor Freight sells super affordable tools for doing metal work. Now, see, I have this file. I'm pretty sure I picked this up at Harbor Freight and I put it into a regular handle that just tightens it up and holds it in place for me. Um, yeah, you can get those at Harbor Freight and you can clean up the edges with that. Uh, you need to clean your edges because there'll be sharp pieces and you don't want them cutting your, cutting the person that you give your beautiful jewelry gift to. But, if you do have a drill or a Dremel, then you can do things a little easier and clean up your edges with a motorized tool. Oh, God. 
God, that sound. I need some wax. See if I stack the two letters together, I can make them pretty much identical. I just clean them up right at the same time. I just went outside um, while taking a break and scraped out the chicken coop. And when I did, a chicken decided to fly up into the coop, stand in some chicken crap, and then fly off the ledge uh, back onto the ground again. And some of that chicken crap went right down my shirt. Girl, I don't know her first name, but I subscribed to Dirt Patch, Dirt Patch Heaven. And she mentioned that when you're a farm person, you should wear the proper clothing and have your your a uh, high neckline so hay and you know straw and stuff doesn't fall down your shirt and I would just like to add chicken crap to another thing you don't want going down your shirt yes I will be showering today but not yet because I am going to get a little dirtier first but luckily it was dry and I just fly, you know I just pulled my shirt out and flung it out To attach the T to the D for my jewelry design, I am using uh, Handy Flux. I'm coating the silver with the Handy Flux so that it, I don't get the blackening of the silver that happens when you when you heat it. It'll it protects the silver from it's not called tarnish. Oh, fire scale. It, Covering the metal with flux not only helps move the solder on the surface, but also protects the jewelry from fire scale, which is very hard to remove once it happens. So it's better to prevent it in the first place. I'm balancing the T on top of another piece of silver because the T is higher than the D. And I need it to stay in the right place while I solder it. So while that dries a little, I will coat the other, or his and hers necklaces. So I have a, I have two to make. Identical designs. So I will get flux on both of those. Let it dry a little while I get the solder ready. What I'm using for solder is called silver paste solder. And um, mine's a little dried out, but it'll work fine. I'm going to put it at the places where the silver is going to, where the designs are touching. Just a little bit. It doesn't need much, because once it melts, it spreads very thin. And we've got to make sure I get it exactly in the position I want it before I solder it. I'm running a Smith Little Torch on this project, which is a two gas. It's a propane and oxygen torch. And that's, I work in the cold in my garage. And I, uh, so I designed this little gadget. Don't need to have it. Don't even need to have a fancy torch. Um, you can buy one of these torches at Lowe's and they work just fine.
Okay, the solder just flowed, so I'm backing off. Just checking to make sure it flowed through both sides. Okay, looks good. The T moved. So I am going to have to resolder that. See the T's not straight anymore. The solder slid the T. Dang it. I have my third hand, which is a uh, it's a clip. It's gonna hold this hopefully hold this T in place while I heat it up so I can pull that D off and try soldering it back in the in the exact position that I would like it to be in. Or hope maybe I could just slide it into place. That would be really nice, but unlikely. Okay. That would just be magical if it would just but, oh, there it is. I'm trying to hold still so it solders on. As it cools, that, that solder becomes hard. So let's see if it worked. That thing's pretty hot. So I need a tool to get it loose. There we go. good. I've got the T and the D's soldered together for the pendant. Now I'm going to put them in a pickle solution and this is the pickle solution I use and I have some, well, the bottom's really dirty but it's actually kind of a clear bluish. It's eye protection tongs, always copper tongs with that. So I keep my tongs out so I remember to grab it with the right thing. And that is so that you don't turn your pickle into an electroplating solution, I believe. Thanks for watching. Part one of the making of, the making of the TD necklace pendant. Tomorrow, we'll hook up a chain and get it ready to go. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye. I believe you have my stapler.